guys, so I am back with another episode in my do's and don'ts series and so this one is going to be how to draw fur in coloured pencil. So I've already done one on drawing fur in graphite but obviously coloured pencil is a whole different sort of ball game, loads of different techniques so I thought I would do a separate episode on drawing fur in coloured pencil. So anyway guys, let's get into it. So on the left hand side I'm going to be doing the don't study and on the right hand side it is going to be the do version. And so the first thing that you should do is create a really light outline sketch for where your main sections of fur are going to be. So the direction of the fur and all of that sort of stuff. So on the don't side you'll see that I haven't done a sketch and that means it's hard for me to be able to do accurate sort of shadows in the fur and know where each section of fur is in the direction of the fur. Whereas if you give yourself sort of a base outline at the start it will be much easier when it comes to the colouring stage. But make sure that you're doing it really light, you don't want the pencil strokes to be showing through your coloured pencil. So now going over to the don't side, the first thing that I'm doing is I'm taking a black pencil, I'm going in way too dark to start off with and I'm also doing it in a very erratic sort of movements. I'm going back and forth with the pencil, I'm not really paying much attention to building up the layers slowly and from like really light colours to dark colours, I'm just going in straight away with the darkest pencil and I'm applying a bit too much pressure, I'm not really focusing on the direction too much, it's just very scribbly, very very rushed and you need to pay a lot more attention if you want to make your fur look realistic. It's not something that you should rush through. So moving over to the do side, what you do want to do is you can still take a brown pencil, try to avoid the black to start with, but use it a lot lighter. You can see that I'm really being careful and patient. I'm not going back and forth. I'm looking at the direction of the fur and I'm looking at where the shadows are and I start very, very lightly and I'll build up more and more layers to get those darker tones. So what I'm doing is I'm using lines and I'm going from one end to the other and then I start a new line. I don't just go back and forth and use that scribbly sort of motion. So really look at each section of fur where the shadows are and try to block them in with the darker brown pencil. So this first stage is just to block in each of the sections of fur and to get in that general sort of shape and kind of get in the structure of where all of your sections of fur are going and to get in the direction, the movement and any of the main shadows. So just build that up, make sure your pencil is really, really sharp. I am using the Faber-Castell Polychromos for this, so they tend to keep their point really, really well. But if you're using something like Prismacolor pencils or pencils that have a softer lead, then make sure you keep sharpening the pencil. Also a little trick to make sure you're keeping your pencil sharper for longer, you can slightly rotate your pencil as you draw to like kind of make sure that you're keeping it pointed because you're wearing it down sort of evenly and it really helps to keep your pencil sharper for longer. So as you can see I'm just building up more and more shadow, as I added the first layer I then go back in and I darken up any areas that need even more shadow but I don't go really dark at the start. So moving back to the don't side, what I'm doing wrong here is I'm using a dark pencil, so the brown pencil again, and I'm shading in the whole area of fur. I'm not paying attention to the direction, I'm going in very random directions, and I'm just shading over the whole thing. I'm not thinking about where the highlights are, I'm not thinking about what areas I need to preserve for the highlight bits of fur. So I'm just shading in the whole of that circle, and I haven't paid any attention to the actual shape and structure of the fur. So what you do want to do is you want to go in with a light pencil to start with, so your lightest pencil, the colour of your highlights, and I'm going in with the cream polychromos pencil. And so I do shade this everywhere to create a base layer, but I'm going with the direction of each section of fur, and I'm really taking my time to do this. You also want to make sure you're doing it nice and light, don't go in with scribbly, heavy applications of the pencil with too much pressure, otherwise you'll get stubborn pencil lines that will show through and it'll be hard to erase them if you want to. So back to the don'ts, now what I'm doing is I have to go in with a darker pencil because I've already gone so dark to start with. So I'm just building up even more shadows and I'm just applying it again in the wrong sort of way with those scribbly motions. I'm not paying any attention to the soft transitions between the fur, it's all very outlined and heavy. 
what you do want to do is slowly go up to darker pencils try to get in lots of different tones of colors like you can see now I'm using a warmer hued pencil that slightly orange tone and so I'm really slowly building up the layers of different colors you'll see I go through a good few different colors I started with that orangey tone then I switch to a light brown and I slowly build up the shadows in each section of fur I really give each sort of section of fur attention and I don't rush through any of the sections it can be like kind of tempting to rush through it if you've got a lot of fur to do but really make sure that you're really paying attention and being patient with it because colour pencil is a really slow process so I'm just using that brown to darken up the shadows and so as I go to darker and darker pencils I'm just using them less and less because I won't need to use the dark pencils on as many places it would just be on the really shadowed areas. So now I'm going in with a darker brown pencil. This was the brown pencil that I started with on the don't side. And I'm just using this with a bit more pressure to get it to show up a bit more to go and do the really dark sections of fur. So this could be the sort of underneath layers that, have, that aren't getting as much light. And so just look at your reference image to see where those shadows are. So again, I'm still going in lines and I'm really making sure that I don't get tempted to do that back and forth scribbly motion, which is something that I do see so many people do. When I do my critiques and people have drawn animals in colour pencil, it is the most common thing that I see people do is go back and forth and make it look too heavy and too outlined. So now I'm going in with a black pencil. Now I'm going in with that darker pencil because I've worked up to it. I've built up those other colors. And so I'm using this on those darkest areas again. And it is so important to make it look like your fur is in layers, that it isn't just two dimensional, one layer of fur. They are layered and there will be the highlighted strands of fur on the top. And then those underneath layers, which will have shadows cast on them from the layers of fur above. So it is so important to make it look sort of three dimensional and to look like it has layers if you want it to look realistic it's all about looking like it has lots of layers and depth to the fur and to make something look like it has a lot of depth then you need that contrast you need those dark shadows and those bright highlights as you can see on the do side I am also preserving the highlights so you can see automatically where those lighter areas are because I haven't put dark pencil on them so now I notice that on the don't side I actually need to lighten it up and so I'm going in with the ivory colour but because it's so dark it's hard to lighten up those colours. Whereas on the do side because I've already got those highlights it's easy to use this to blend over them to smooth everything out and also to slightly lighten up those areas a bit as well. So I'm using this colour to mainly soften everything out to get any graininess gone to get rid of that and also just to make it look a lot softer and silkier and just nice and smooth. It's nice to blend all of those layers together with a slightly lighter tone and then we can go and build on it with more and more shadows and more rich tones. So you'll see that that has lightened it up a bit so we need to replenish that with some of those darker tones and like always what I'm doing wrong on the don't hand side is I'm scribbling, I'm using scribbling motions, I'm not paying attention to the individual sort of strands of hair, it's all going in a very uniform direction, there's no natural sort of messy bits of fur that are going against the direction, which is what you need, not every single bit of fur is going to be uniformed and going perfectly in that direction, there will be some messier bits that go against the direction, so you need to make sure that you're doing those stray bits of fur in order to make it look natural, relaxed and just to give it a nice sort of flow and a messy sort of look. So I'm just building up more and more of those brown tones and now I'm going in with the black again. I didn't jump straight to the black. I've gone in with the brown and also if you don't want to make your black look too sort of flat then you can overlay some browns over the top of the black to give it more of a natural colour and to make it look like the colour of that fur is more sort of succinct and all the colours complement each other. Otherwise if you just had black it might look slightly strange to have just the black shown without any sort of brown on top of it to make it look like a dark sort of brown tone. I'm also going in with some burnt sienna just to make the colour a bit more vibrant, to give it a bit more life, not to make it look such a dull sort of brown, just to give it a bit more sort of vibrancy to the fur. So make sure you glaze some of those colours over your fur to give it a nice lifelike look. And look at the reference and try to pull out the subtle tones as well to make it look like the fur of the animal you're drawing. 
back to the don't side and so I'm trying to pull up highlights with my Tombow Mono Eraser but I'm not doing them very sort of fine. I'm going in and just doing it very back and forth messily but what you want to do is you want to go in and really make sure that you're looking for the fine details don't do them too thick you might want to do some very thickness of highlights so some really thin and some a lot thicker and you can see here I'm making it look a bit messier I'm not going completely with the direction I'm curving off certain bits of fur so that they overlap different sections so that it does look a lot more natural and all the fur isn't just stuck in that uniform position and that's what you've got to do if you don't want it to look too sort of rigid. So pulling up these highlighted bits of fur makes it look like you've got that top layer of fur. So these most highlighted bits are the ones that are on top and this adds depth because you've got that contrast. You've got those really highlighted bits of fur that are getting the most light and so they are like the top layer and then you've got the darker ones which are sort of the layers beneath. So adding these highlighted bits of fur is a really great thing to do at the end in order to make it look like it has a lot more depth by giving it more contrast. Another thing you'll want to do is once you've pulled up all of those highlights you might want to go back in with the browns and blacks just to add in any sort of shadows that you need to if you've erased any areas by accident you can fix it with your colours and just go in and add any details. But what you definitely don't want to do is go and try and outline sections of fur. But those are basically the main do's and don'ts for drawing fur. If you guys want to see even more real-time versions of how I draw fur in coloured pencil as well as animals in lots of different mediums and portraits then check out my Patreon. I have loads of new real-time tutorials on there every single month that you can watch and follow along to. Anyway guys that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did make sure to give it a like and if you're new around here and you want to see even more do's and don'ts videos make sure you hit that subscribe button. But that's it from me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.